Yes, it's absolutely possible to add key and fuel source from OBS Studio to AT Mini. Don't believe it? I will tell you now. Hello everyone, if you work with animated graphics during live streaming, you have probably wondered what is key and fuel source. From open sources, we know that the key and fill is a technique used to composite graphics in broadcast vision mixers. Physical video signals like HDMI and SDI do not carry alpha information. Hence, the alpha channel key needs to be split into a separate video signal with alpha being presented as luminance. The fill signal contains video to be stacked over the background, while the key signal contains a grayscale mask to cut out or mask the area to be filled. I hope this clarifies things a bit for you. This technology is precisely what is used in the ATEM Mini Extreme. There's one signal that contains information, and there's a second one which serves as a mask. I myself have been pondering this issue for quite some time. The most correct way is to purchase the Blackmagic Decklink Duo version 2. I tried Decklink Duo version 1. It doesn't work. To connect with Decklink Duo 2, you will need two SDI cables to fetch the key and fill source for our graphics. But there is a small problem. My ATEM Mini Extreme doesn't have SDI inputs. And using converters means adding an additional device to this system. That's why I won't consider this method in this video. And that's why I found an alternative way of how to get key and fill source directly from OBS Studio. Let's get started. First, we need to extract two signals from the computer, so let's connect two HDMI cables. Since my video card has only one HDMI port, I'm using a display port to HDMI adapter to connect two additional HDMI cables, which I then plug into my AT Mini Extreme input 7 and 8. Now we are ready to configure OBS Studio. To get an additional output signal, we need to duplicate this scene with our graphics. Then open the pop-up menu and choose filters, where we need to add a chroma key filter and set its brightness to 100%. If that's not enough, you can also adjust this similar parameter. In my case, I increase it to a value of 300. Make sure to check the display of your graphics before use. This way we have scene 1 as a fill source and scene 2 as a key source. In the Atom software settings, you can assign both of these signals as fill and key. I recommend labeling them to avoid confusion during setup. If you have done everything correctly, our images should appear on the multi-view screen. In my case, it sources 7 and 8. If all the ports on your video card are occupied, you can use USB adapter with two HDMI outputs. I have also tested it, and it works. I will leave all the links in the description below this video. Also, I recommend going to the display settings, checking the connection and separating the two screens from the main monitor to avoid situation where the mouse cursor accidentally moves onto the image of our graphics. In the ATEM software settings, you can choose both downstream key and upstream key. Personally, I prefer the second method. To use it, we need to open upstream key 1, then select the Luma mode, set the fill source to input 7 and set the key source to input 8. I have pre-configured BitFocus Companion for demonstration to automate the animation launch process. Let's see how our animation is displayed now. The graphics are working perfectly. Unfortunately, this method has its drawbacks. Firstly, it puts a strain on your system because OBS Studio plays two scenes at the same time. Therefore, it's crucial that your system has enough resources to handle this task. Secondly, to the lack of HDMI signal synchronization, you may notice slight delay during graphics playback. Whether this is acceptable to you or not is for you to decide. In several months of use, I haven't noticed any significant issues. Besides, you can always switch to using the Decklink Duo version 2. That's all. Share your thoughts in the comments and see you in the next one. Bye!